Before we get started, sir, we just have this here. It's an interview release form. If you just wanted to read it, I mean, read this top part there, and I'll just need you to sign down here on the bottom for us, sir. Set up pretty good? Yeah. Okay. That's perfect. Okay. I can forget it's there. Yeah, I didn't see any battery thing on there today, so I knew it was good. <laughs> We ran out of battery at our last <laughs> conversation. Yeah. I had to take notes furiously. <laughs> you have this too, don't you? So. Right. I don't know if I brought a copy, but I think I might have, yeah. morning. Um, first thing we'd like to ask you is if you could please state your name for us. My name is Robert Taylor Jr. Okay, and how long have you lived here in Wilson, sir? 85 years. 85 years. So you were born and raised here. Yes. Okay. These years that you've been here, what kind of work have you done? Various kind. Mm -hmm. uh, doing World War II. No, I think that was really my first job in the tobacco. Was younger. I went to the telegraph office, the union office mm -hmm. here, and I was the black, first black employed there, and I was a messenger. Uh, that, job, that job proved to be very interesting, wherein we know that we were at war, and we know, I know that I would have to be delivering telegrams so often there were casualty messages. Huh. Now when we would go into a neighborhood during that particular time, the blacks weren't getting any tolerance. So as I would pedal my bicycles in certain neighborhoods during the summer especially, the people were on their porches and they knew that if I would go to somebody's house huh. with a telegram in the community, they would say, yeah, they would wonder why I was going there. That was only I had to, re to deliver that telegram. We always knew telegrams that were casualty messages because they had three or four blue stars on the envelope. And it was my duty of my job to see that they signed for that particular telegram. I just couldn't drop it off. And when I would walk on the porch, they would come out knowing that it would be bad news because they would be trembling. And they couldn't have signed it. And it was devastating for me to stand there and go through that. However, it was my job. How old were you when you were doing that? Six, Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. I just reached the age that they could employ me. And I stayed there for several summers. I couldn't work during the winter because I was in school. Right. But they would hire me in the summer. So you weren't of age where you could have been in the war then? No. no. Okay. Now, did you, did you later serve in the Armed Forces at no. all? Never did? No. Okay. Uh, I didn't serve because my father died uh, the year that I finished high school. Mm -hmm. And I was my mother's sole dependent. Uh -huh. And we had, I had a sister in school. Therefore, I had to stay out and work so that I could help my mother with the home expense and with my sister in school. I was working at a, we had black drugstores during that time. And I was employed in this drugstore as a soda jerk. Over a period of time, I moved from soda jerk to a PA, uh, the pharmacist assistant. The 
was there that I learned all about prescription drugs. I could handle them. Uh, I would count whatever number of pills that he wanted, and I would do the typing of the labels, and I would pass all that down to the pharmacist, along with the prescription, to be checked. Now, what business was this, sir? That was the black drugstore down on East Nashville. Mm -hmm. Remember the name of it? Shades. Hey. I worked there for Shades. It's a good Shades. I worked there for 30 years. Really? Okay. Hmm. I remained, had to remain out of school for that. Mm -hmm. To get my sister through and pay the rent and the electricity. However, I was making $15 a week. Mm -hmm. Out of that $15 a week, my mother, I would give it all to my mother on Saturday night, mm -hmm. and I would get $2 mm -hmm. to run me through the week, which I did not object, because I knew that we needed it at home. She could pay the rent, the utility bill, and buy little food that we had, and during that time, you could go to the grocery store, and you could buy five cents worth of sugar, five cents worth of anything you wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's where we survived. My mother also did, she was a laundry, she would do washing and ironing, and that would supplement what I had given her during the week. And the following year, but my sister had graduated, I stayed out that year, and the next year I was able to go to New York and work in a laundry, and I could save my money to send back, I'd send money back every week week paper for my mother to keep, and that was to pay my tuition for that particular semester. Then I'd have to figure out a way to get the next tuition because we paid it twice a year. I had to figure out a way to get that. Well, after that first year in school, I was forced to come out due to financial reasons. I had to come to work because we just couldn't afford it. I went back to New York and got the same job that I had. And again, I was able to go back. So really, during that college of education, I was out two years. I was out my first year, and then I had to drop out after my first year to work another year. So I fell behind the first in my class for that year. And what school was this? That was Johnson C. Smith University in Charlotte. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's where it was. Uh, were you, were you studying uh, pharmacy? No. No. What were you studying? No. I went in. Uh, I knew that I could not afford to go to pharmacy school. I could go to pharmacy school. I knew that right. because financially we were unable. Right. But however, I continued to work with that. And I graduated from college in 1953. And I had gone to the educational field. Oh. I started, my first job was here in Wilson. My last job was here in Wilson. <laughs> I started in elementary school. I was teaching the seventh grade. What school was this? Well, I started really in my first job. Was at, at that time, doing, it was out at Elvie Street, <laughs> which was now, now they had changed, name changed to Daniels. That's where I was. When uh, schools integrated in 1978, I was here at B.O. Bonds. And I worked at B.O. Bonds for uh, two or three years, I'd say, and they transferred me over to Vincent Banner, which is out at the, on Tall Park Street. From Vincent Banner, a job came available, and I was interested in that job. They had, during that time, they were showing a film to each school classroom from four to seven concerning drugs and all that. So I got interested in that. So I went by the superintendent's office and told him, I asked, I said, that job is still available. If you're going to do it next year, I'd like to do that. However, he didn't. So I continued with the seventh grade. Uh, 
med hende, så jeg til det op, der er vendt som med hende. Og uh, I worked there a part of that year. And a job became available in the vocational department here. I wasn't prepared for that. They offered me that job. Hmm. And I readily accepted it with the condition that I go to school and change my certificate from elementary ed to vocational education. And I enrolled that summer up in North Carolina State in Raleigh mm. and changed my certificate. When I came back to Wilson, I had a work program. <coughs> I'd go out and talk with the owners of businesses. The city was very cooperative with me that particular year. <coughs> and they would hire the students and they would pay the students. Now the students would be in class a portion of the day. At 12 noon, they would leave school and they would go to this, these jobs. It was my duty to go around and check to see them in the on-site work we do work and see what they were doing. They were graded along the employee would do the grading mm -hmm. and then I would have to grade the classroom phase of it. So we would put that grade together and come up with the final grade. And that worked for many years for me. It worked for many years. Yeah. And then the great day came when they finished the new school. I left Darden and I went to Bayville. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I taught at Bettingville from 1978. Yes, sir. I was in 78. And I worked and I retired in 90. My duration of teaching was 37 and a half years. Mm -hmm. And I never went out of Wilson County. I was always here. Yeah. And on finishing of my retirement, when I retired, I felt that I couldn't stay home. So I decided that I would sub. So I went down my office and registered to sub. And I did that for about two, about two years. But then things began to change. And was this a various schools where you did go? No, I only went to Bettingfield. Oh, that's so I, I said, I go to Bettingfield. I won't go throughout the city. Mm -hmm. But things started to change. Yeah. How Big that? change. Like what? Students. They were subbing. Mm -hmm. A sub going into a class that you had not handled before. Mm -hmm. yeah. And with their attitude, yeah. With their not wanting to do, it bothered me. Because I was used to students doing what they had to do. Not being forced with all this stuff in the classroom. You came in here to work. <coughs> Excuse me. You came here to work. And that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. But they didn't want to do it. We had during that time. Can I ask? Why do you think? What, what made the change come about with the students? Was it? The street. The gangs. Yeah. We had gangs. Oh, and when did the gang problems begin? Oh, gang problems began back then, early 90s. Oh, really? Oh, yes. And I was in the middle of it. Mm. I was in the middle of it. And when I say in the middle of it, I knew all about them. I yeah. knew the gangs. Yeah. And believe it or not, I won the respect of those games during that day. You did? I really did. How? How did you do that? Talking with them and trying to improve their character, yeah. and they fell for it. <laughs> I was known, and I, they still, students who had finished school now, they gave me a name as chief, that chief ruled. I'll be honest with you. I could talk to them. Mm -hmm. I could meet with them. And I would often tell them, what you are doing, you're destroying yourselves. Yeah. And 
I said, you're running from Heron Avenue to Elvis Street. You're sweeping through that area. Now, do you know who lives there? Uh -huh. That's what I tell them. Do you know who, who, who's there? I said, we're hurting each other. Hmm. Eventually. Oh, and they did tell me, they said, Chief, they would ask me, the one asked me, said, Chief, did you go out last night? <clears throat> I told yeah. And I said, well, why would you ask? I said, they said, well, did it bother bother you? I said, no. I said, I did see people following me. I walked from my house, and I live on face of the street, mm -hmm. and during that time, the motor company was on the corner of Herring Avenue and uh, Bender Street. Mm -hmm. And I walked out there one night, just to look. And I saw these people ducking, but I couldn't <laughs> stop. I continued to walk. I turned and I went over here from Lee Motor Company. I went to Cox Dodge, which was on the corner of 301 and here, uh, 301 and Fort Yeah. I walked in that little cars, which I wouldn't go by, right. and then I made it home. Mm -hmm. Well, they informed me the next day, did you see somebody? I told them, yeah. I said, I did. They said, it was us. <laughs> I said, well, why would you follow me on the street? Yeah. They said for protection. I said, no, it's going to bother me. They said, well, we just want to make sure that you got off your walk and back home safely. Mm -hmm. And from that, <clears throat> they said, no more. No more problems. Mm -hmm. They just gave it up. But so since that time, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't bother. No, I don't. Yeah. But I was, we, were at, I'm sorry. we were at a basketball game one night, yeah. and they were there. Huh. And I was talking, what we were doing the half time, we all went in the outdoor auditorium, and we sat there talking, and one of the deputies came up to me after they went back in, yeah. and asked me, Mr. Taylor, do you know who you were talking to? <laughs> I said, yeah, I was a gang member. He said, well, what you come to? I said, nothing. I said, you won't be bothered them anymore. I said, they respect me, and I respect them, even though they've done some things that I don't approve of. Yeah. But we respect each other. I said, and I'm thinking now that that would be the end of it. Hmm. And it was. It was. It was. <laughs> Are any of those young men still around? <laughs> I'm not going to ask you for the name. Straight to ask that. <laughs> yeah, I bet there's some. I story. heard <clears throat> last Memorial Day, someone told me, said, Chief, there's a party out on Spade School Road. Yeah. I said, okay. I said, what about it? Well, see, I had locked to the teach us. Teach me. I said, Mr. Come on, I said, I don't care about luck to see you. I said, well, I'm not going. Something led me to that party, and I was the seller of attention. <laughs> it was one of the nicest affairs that I had been to. And when I drove back off and parked, they all gathered around me and said, You've got to come here. We want you to see here. We want you to see this. And I met students that I had seen in 28 years. Very respectful. And working and making an honest living. So they are, uh, that was the end of that. But I had many experiences, experiences here at Wilson. Right. I really have. So you said that uh, integration came in 1978? Something, that's what screws up. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And you got transferred. Mm -hmm. But the strange thing, the party went right to deal. The strange thing about that. They had Darden as a 10th grade school. That meant they all students were going to Darden right down the street there. Mm -hmm. I was at Vincent Banner down here on East Nash. We went to work and we couldn't down at Vincent Banner, I mean at Barnes, mm -hmm. we could not go. Barnes didn't open until two weeks after the regular schools had opened. 
Mm. We had to stay out for two weeks. Mm. Uh, during that two weeks, I would sub in other schools, mm. there, but I was paid for subbing. Also getting my regular monthly check because I wasn't. Uh, I couldn't cause it. I didn't cause this out here. Mm. And what happened? Uh, bond school students had to come from 301, North 301, mm. to here. And it was about <clears throat> 10. But the parents kept their students home refused to let them go. Why? Wow. But that was a black school and they didn't want their students to go to Barnes, which was a black school. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you there. Uh -huh. So they stayed out. By them staying out, it kept us from going to work. Eventually, we ended up with about seven. Mm -hmm. And they they went they mixed very well. We had no did. problems mm -hmm. from that. And that they just go on. They, they went. And they went somewhere else. During the, um, during the time, you know, you know, civil rights era, integration, of, you know, are there any other things that happened here at Wilson that you, you feel maybe had some significance in, in helping to, <laughs> to push that here in, the, in this area? Now, Wilson, mm -hmm. from my early years, you know, Wilson, oh, excuse me. Wilson has all, always been, the railroad track, mm -hmm. has always been the dividing line here in Wilson. Mm -hmm. East Wilson is all, we've always had that problem. From day one, but not too long ago, and in some areas now, we still have that problem. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we had great problems. Mm -hmm. uh, back in, we had two, black police officers here in Bills Bay and black officers on the force when I uh, yeah, we didn't see them. And in essence, the blacks had a hard time. We had a hard time because we were treated so roughly. Right. Not me. <laughs> no. Right. But in general. Mm -hmm. Those two black officers were hired. And they were put on the east side of Wilson, right down Nash Street. They could go to the railroad back this way. The only problem there was, they did not have a patrol car. Really? They on foot. If they had an arrest to make, they would have to call downtown and get a car really? to come and pick up where they were. And they were not allowed to arrest white people. They weren't. You could not have white people. Of course, there probably weren't any white people in no, Wilson. Did, were you did not have <laughs> too many whites on the side mm -hmm. of the track. Right. And that went on for years. Hmm. And eventually, they gave them the car. It was in the late 50s. They gave them a car, each one a car. Hmm. And they kind of opened up a little more. But we did have problems with that. I imagine. I've seen many problems right here. So there. I have. I'm sorry. So there was no um, police protection then before they hired those two officers, right? The, did the white officers even come into this part of town? Yeah. And they would come and they would sometimes beat people unmercifully. The police? Just, just beat them with, the, with their nightsticks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nothing was never done. So people weren't too eager to call the police then, I oh. guess. <laughs> Oh yeah. no. Right. Because they knew what would happen once those officers got here. Mm -hmm. huh. However, during that time, we never bothered to knock our front door. Hmm. Not where I lived. I grew up on I, I grew up on Green Street. Mm -hmm. In the six hundred block of East Green Street. That's where I was born. That's where I was reared. And I lived there until nineteen. 58, and I moved over on Basin Street. I eventually got able to kind of get me a place to live, and I built, we built a house. I was married at the time, and that was what my wife and I said, I'll go, we're going to have to build. And we did. Mm -hmm. But during that time, we didn't have to lock our doors. Mm -hmm. Nobody bothered us. Huh. And
And as you're, if you know, Green Street was the street at that time. You had, on that street, you had a dentist, two medical doctors, a uh, undertaker. You had uh, Sam Vick lived there. Yeah. He was right down the street from me. I remember him growing up very well. Do you? And I became, I knew the family. I knew those families. The Hines brothers lived right there. Walter and Bill Hines. Each had barbershops in the downtown area. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with Nash Street in the 200 block of Nash Street across from West. They had them. One had a barbershop right there. During that time, there was a Briggs Hotel. Huh. That was right downtown, one block a half block from the courthouse. Mm -hmm. Now, Walter Hines had a public shop there. He, they served the, 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 the patrons from the Briggs Hotel. They had a side door built into the public shop. They come from the hotel lobby into the public shop. His brother Bill had a public shop on Goldsmore Street. Right across from the old R.E. Queen, you not, may not know about mm -hmm. that because you're newcomers, but there was a big furniture store, the R.E. Quinn, who sold good furniture. Yeah. And he opened his shop there. Yeah. That was right in the one two hundred block of Coast Street. Right. Just before you get to Barnes. Mm -hmm. His barber shop was right down there, uh -huh. court almost. Uh -huh. And that's where Bissett Drugstore was located a long time ago. Mm -hmm. We have a Bissett Drugstore. Oh, yeah. They moved from Goldsboro Street to Nash Street, right in front of the courthouse. Mm -hmm. And from there, they moved to Brickwood. Right. That's where they went. I bet that was where they closed. And believe it or not, I had the opportunity to work at uh, the Bishop when they first opened. Mr. Bishop called me and asked me if I would come down on their opening day, yeah. and I went. Yeah. But prior to that, <coughs> I worked at the old terminal drugstore. Mm -hmm. I worked there. <laughs> I worked there from 1960. Mm -hmm. to 1991. Hmm. I worked there 30 years. Hmm. Well, you were teaching too? I would go to work at school. Uh -huh. And I would go there on, after I left school. <clears throat> I could go. It was open at night then. I could, I could go. Yeah. It was tough to see them close recently. Yeah. And yeah. then I would go there on Saturday. Yeah. I started there mm -hmm. just as I did at Shades, <laughs> and I ended up working with Sid Harmon, dispensing medicine with him. Mm -hmm. I did the same thing that I did <laughs> with him that I did with that mm -hmm. black drugstore. I've done the same thing. Uh -huh. um, 37 years. Wow. What now else? this is gone. Florida. <laughs> okay. I needed to do something after I retired. Now what? I'm going to get me a part-time job. I'm going to get me a job. Yeah. <laughs> of all places, I applied at the police department. Uh, they hired me. Huh. This was 91? Yeah. yeah. I worked at the police department from 1991 to 2010. Huh. I was working at the South District office over here. Mm -hmm. I was doing, I, I enjoyed that. The, the chief of police during that time, I think it was Harry Tyson. Mm -hmm. Okay. I worked here. Yeah. What kind of work did you do there? 